G'day folks. Well over the years we have filmed hundreds of incredibly talented people across the world. Many of these artists have gone on to produce their own videos as well. We hope you enjoy this great lesson from one of our Colour in Your Life artists. Welcome to our lizard in pastel. We've drawn up or we've transferred our image that we did from our graphite and we're now going to work on this so that we can get it up to blocked in the same as the tiger. What I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to start the same way and I'm going to start with the warm grey 270 so it's the light grey again and I'm just going to fill in all the bit that's skin. You must remember that when I do these, I do them so that they're reasonably fast to do. So blocking in is very quick and you have to cover it nicely. Okay, so if you do this, that's not covered nicely because I can still see the background. So the colour of the paper has to all be filled in. With this beautiful Clairefontaine pastel mat, it adores the pastel pencil and we give it a chance to work its best by covering it evenly. Little fibres pick up the pastel dust and place it further down onto the paper itself. These techniques will work with colour pencil, although understand that colour pencil will take a lot longer. Watercolour pencil as well, layering it the same. Even painting, transfer the, uh, the techniques to a paintbrush and paint and it will all work the same as well. Blocking in, adjusting and detail. Now have a look at my grey pencil. It's still got a fair bit of space on it for me to use and I haven't sharpened it yet. We'll be sharpening it soon. There we go, nice long pastel again, so look at that. Did all the blocking in on the tiger without having to sharpen my pencil. Keeps the flow, the creative juices flowing without having to interrupt it. Because I know you're all procrastinators and you will take any excuse to go and have a cuppa. Just as a hint, when I'm holding it down here, I'm adding a little bit of pressure. When I hold the pencil back here, that's when we do the light bits or the twists. I think I'll come right round the edge here and go over those dark lines. Doesn't matter so much there because he's got shadows. Here we go. That's that bit done. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of this. You can use a, a blue grey, a cool grey if you wanted to, but I'm going to use the same one that I've got here. That's just the highlights of these rocks. This one's going to be blurry. Afterwards, these ones are in focus at the front. They're in front of the lizard, so we want them to show a little bit what he's resting on. So 
what happens when your paper gets kinked. That's why we don't roll it. Alright, so we've got uh, blurry here. See how I'm not being so neat on these bits? It's because it's going to be blurry. This one's going to be blurry. Just a thin bit on the top of this. And this bit. This will be a fun background to do. Most of this here, this is the sort of the leafy sort of stuff here. Um, so we'll put some light on here. Still got lots of pastel left and I've done quite a lot of this colour. wood there. You see here where I did it down it had a tiny tiny bit of wood that I hadn't quite taken off and that's what happens. It scratches the paper. At the moment it doesn't matter because I can always trim it to there. That's why you must always be careful to make sure you don't get, get all of those stray bits off. Okay, there's some fleshy coloured uh, fingernails here. I'll have a little bit of ivory on too. And it's kind of a little fleshy bit colour here, which I'm going to add Caput Mortem to to make it sort of lighter. because it's not totally grey, sort of a warm, warm grey. I mean, personally I'd like to put some purple in, but I don't think I gave you purple. So we'll just have to put up with the colours here. I'm going to put a little bit in the rocks, just a little bit, just on the edges of the light. Because he's quite um, camouflaged, except for his big, big dark eyes. That's what I liked about them. Lots of lizards, they look at you and they've got no expression in their eyes. But um, these ones are very intelligent looking. Six, nine. I'm just going to come in and just put a little bit on very softly holding it as far back as I can on the shorter pencil I could have used any uh, lots of different variations of color for this so when you're doing gray purple and green make really interesting grays and you can put blues, you can put um, even turquoises. Now his ear is right back here. Um, this is mouth coming up, probably here. And it's just a little dip. Can't really see much of it. And a little bit here. So this, instead of using the dark grey only, I'm using this as my shadow. Down here, 
you'll see once we put the grey on, all this does is make it a warm shadow. Yeah, I think that is a little bit too high. We've got it there. I think it should have been that one. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to change it. There we go. That's better. And then that becomes there. No worries about changing things. That's what we do. If it needs fixing, fix it. It's no big deal if you need to adjust. See, I haven't even started on the scales yet. I bet you looked at the picture and you're all freaking out about all those scales, and yet we're not even done them yet. All right, now this colour I'm going to put in Caput Mortem down here as well because it's a good colour for leaf litter and dirt. Might as well put it in while I've got it. Just a bit of scribble stroke down here because that's all going to be blurry. That one's not. All adjustable. seven three and go over these shadow areas again paying a little more attention and going outside of the cap at Maltham where it needs to go so it's more gray down here so I'm just going to put some gray on here up the top here Remember to check your eyes, always remember the eyes, the eye shape, that bit there goes right to the edge, very bright here and here. I shall put the light on there again. Dark back here. Now looking at that, it looks like the tips are still light and we'll easily put the outside edges on, the little points, so colour that in. Is he looking lizard-like yet? Of course he is. Now, while I'm doing that, I'll just put some of this on here. See how mixing it up makes it look different? This is the same colour, but it still looks different.
a little bit of the grey through here just to dull it down a little go quite roughly over the top here because it doesn't cover all of it so you won't lose your pictures your lines or anything like that because they will still be showing through even the little tiny lines when you cut it you can get a nice flat bit but look at that lovely point see that point right on the end if I hold it there great point there you don't need to sharpen to a point it will do it by itself okay um, I'm put a little bit of caput mortem down here where it's dark as well just choosing the shapes a little bit there a little bit there it's probably another rock there but we'll do leaf litter instead this bit here just love that turnover bit there, that leaf. And it shows you also, look at the size of the leaf, it shows you the size of the lizards. They're very small little lizards. Okay, 175, nearly ready to blend. Just going to put 175 is, cap, is uh, dark sepia. Just in the darker bits. I'm not taking this right to the edge, I'm just doing it inside that shadow so that it will fade a little. We can adjust all of this later. behind here and I've got to make sure that you get this quite dark as well and then we're going to put the eyeball on which will help get rid of the zombie look zombie looks not good And it's not the final eye. It's not going to be a problem if you do it crooked. Doesn't matter because it's all adjustable, remember. Now, this lizard is looking at us. So he's looking that way. Nostril darker at the bottom, ear darker at the bottom. A little tiny bit of a tilt there and comes down and we'll just put the corner of his mouth in there we'll just check comes down to here He's got delicate little fingers. There you go. And there's a bit of dark here. 
So all of this helps sort out your picture in your head. It's always a good thing to have your head on straight. This bit here, shadow under here. dark here. It's going to have some lovely lichen and spotty bits. Through here we've got some dark. Let's see. A little bit of dark here. Some here. Don't know what they are. Don't care what they are because it's all going to be blurry. A bit here. over here, some flatter leaves and one of them edges that rock there. This bit here, that's light, this is reasonably light and this bit here I think, uh, I think I've done that one a bit long there. Let's just put that there. Does it matter? No! We know it doesn't. A little bit in here. Right. Just going to get the uh, the brown two eight zero. I'm just going to put in an eyeball because you know I don't like the zombie eyes. I'm going to put some of that in there. Just random bits, because this is going to be brownish. There we go. I think I'm going to put a little bit more of the light grey. going to get the 275. Just going to go over that just to add a bit more pastel. Just to smooth it out a bit. blend it against the direction and it's not pressing it's almost like uh, fast dusting we don't want to make all the fibers break what we want is to have the pastel softened so new fibers the, the clean new fibers can come to the surface Put a little bit of the um, flesh colour in here. Of course that doesn't have a lot of pastel on it and I want it to blend a bit more. Okay. A little bit cross hatching there. So some of it I haven't done a very good job of, have I? Okay. And guess what? Doesn't matter because we can just go over it again. Okay, now 
blend, 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 blend. Give it all a good rub. There we go. Um, just because he's looking a bit zombified, I'm just going to put a little bit of light up here because I don't like zombies. There you go. So it at least looks alive. Okay, that's our lizard blocked in, ready for the adjusting level, which will be next. <laughs> 